Um, so, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan. I am a senior computer scientist at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. Um, we're a national laboratory up in Washington State. Uh, and today I'm going to give a very brief presentation on Lamellar, uh, which is our Rust based um, HPC runtime uh, that we're hoping to um, introduce to folks and, and maybe get some, some collaboration going. Um, so if we take a kind of a brief look at the stack for Lamellar, um, if you're used to runtime design, this will look pretty similar. Um, you know, so at the top we have the user applications and then below that we have the Lamellar runtime where we expose different types of APIs. Uh, we have kind of some high level APIs in the form of Lamellar arrays or, you know, think of those as distributed arrays. Uh, those are built upon these extensions to atomic reference counters that we've called darks. Uh, and then sitting on top of that, we have both this PGAS, which is a, a, you know, a global address space, and then our partitioned global address space, and then this oh, active yeah. message layer that helps to drive um, all the communication and execution of remote tasks in the runtime. Oh, yeah. And then below that, we have you know the thread pool for executing our asynchronous tasks, then this LAMLA layer which is really the interface between uh, the network fabrics and the upper levels of the runtime. Um, so I probably have said all these in speaking terms, so I'll just kind of go through, uh, define a couple terms. So active messages, just think of those as distributed asynchronous tasks. Um, darks, again, are these distributed arcs, and then lamellar arrays are a higher level data structure um, that's pretty natural to inter interact with. Um, and then when we talk about the LAMLAs, really the most important aspect about this is that we support high performance InfiniBand networks. And that's specifically through this LAMLA called ROFI, um, which is a combination of a very lightweight C library and a sys crate that interacts with the, the lib fabrics um, uh, infrastructure and library that is common in other HPC runtimes. And then finally, uh, just because we'll probably be using this throughout the rest of the presentation, um, is this term PE that I'll be throwing out, which basically means a processing element. And for lack of a better term, let's just think of this as equivalent to an MPI rank. Um, each PE will support multiple OS threads, and we can have multiple PEs per a hardware node, where you would think about having one PE per physical socket on your on your system. Um, so this is a pretty busy slide. This is kind of talking about active messages. Uh, and again, an active message can really be thought of as an asynchronous remote execution, um, where we're leveraging the async await syntax from the Rust language itself. Uh, we've been able to do this through implementing a set of procedural macros. Um, so we have two that we work with. The first is this AM data one. Uh, and what this really does is essentially it extends the derived procedural macro that Rust provides naturally. Um, so you would apply this to user defined structs or to enums. And this really represents the active message input data. So this is the data that you will want to be sending within your message um, to a remote PE somewhere to be executed. Uh, so you can simply, on the right-hand side here, you can just kind of simply see that you apply that macro to your struct and, and a bunch of magic happens underneath that does serialization and deserialization um, so that we can send the data appropriately. Uh, the, the partner procedural macro now is just this simple AM procedural macro, and this is actually applied um, to a user-defined implementation of the Lamellar AM trait, uh, and this is what represents the actual remote execution that we will perform on our data. So, you know, in this example, we see that this is, in fact, an asynchronous function. Here, we're simply just going to be printing um, whatever our hello AM world or hello world AM struct, the contents of that. But um, you can make those fairly complex. You can await other uh, active messages within a, a given active message. So they're pretty powerful. Um, next, we can return data or return a callback AM. Um, so if we launch something to a remote PE, it does some computation. 
we can return the result of that PE or of that computation. Um, that result can also be an AM that will automatically execute when it returns back to the original uh, processing. Uh, we provide both point to point, so where we want to exec a given active message on a given PE, as well as collective, where we want to execute an active message on all PEs. Uh, so we support both kind of modes there. Next, um, kind of the next key component of LAMLR is this introduction of a, a distributed atomic reference counted object. Um, so if you remember from our previous slide where we have this procedural macro uh, that looks at the struct, um, if we contain a dark within this, so if we have this distributed reference kind of object within one of our structs that we want to send over, um, our procedural macro is smart enough to go through, realize that this is, you know, a special distributed data structure that we can um, increment and decrement the reference counts appropriately when we're serializing and deserializing that data as we send it across the network. So the goal for this really was to be very similar to the behavior of a standard Rust arc, um, but you know, expose that to distributed memory. So we have a global lifetime where the, the value wrapped by the dark will be valid and accessible as long as any PE maintains a reference to that data. Um, and of course, intermutability is going to be disallowed by default. So you can still wrap, you know, your atomic use size and then, you know, access that like you normally would. Um, and, and the real key thing here is that we intend darks really to be used within active messages because of that specialized deserialization and serialization protocol that we have. Um, we use darks really as a basis for some of our other high level uh, interfaces that we provide. Um, which is a great segue into one of those interfaces, which is this LAMLR array. So um, this is simply a concept of a distributed array, and we provide various types with various different safety guarantees. Um, so, you know, we have a read-only array where, uh, you know, that's exactly what it says. Right, thank you. Please. Yep. Um, so I will actually just kind of leave this slide up here. I'll skip over. Uh, but yeah, we have, you know, the whole gamut from unsafe to very safe, which is read only, and then atomics and everything in between. Um, I won't go into the performance here. We can cover this later in the discussion session. And then I'll just finish up with uh, stating that our runtime is available both on GitHub as well as crates.io. Um, and here are the links for that with a couple benchmarks and, and some various commentary on that. Uh, we have full documentation on, on docs uh, on the docs site as well. So I'm looking forward to following up with any questions and thanks for listening.